in Russian language, the word scientist translates to someone who was taught, which is very powerful. Like it's not, that's not the word for like educator. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know? Uh, so it means someone who is taught. And, and I feel like that's very powerful because it implies an obligation, not only for me to be a student. Um, and I believe actively you have to work to be a student. Like it's, you're, nobody's a natural student. You have to work at it. Mm-hmm. And it's a fallacy to think that you can naturally absorb these material without uh, some programmatic way of doing it. I talk about some tools to do that in the book. But beyond that, you have to be a teacher because you mm-hmm. have to pay it forward. Mm-hmm. And I, I like that aspect of that little brief vignette from the Russian language. Mm-hmm. Uh, but let's talk about aliens because that's yeah. Your- <laughs> let's get into it. So, are they real? All those videos that snuck out last year was that strategically placed to get our mind off of all of the wildness that was happening? Um, I need to know. Yeah, exactly. I need to well, know. Well, I'm going to tell you what's going on with the. <laughs> <laughs> This is now, but NASA has been fully investigating this conversation. It never happened. Um, So again, the best answer for a scientist, not a cop out, say we don't know. Mm -hmm. We can't rule out. We can't prove it is. We can't rule out that it's not. Um, On the other hand, you can uh, speculate using methods of logical, rational inference. What are the probabilities that these spacecraft are here? And it's so fascinating to me because you can get people that are, you know, equally bright on both sides of the argument, Mm -hmm. which tells me a couple of things. One is that it's something legitimate to investigate. It doesn't, you know, it's like the study, like if you're addicted to comic books, like that's not great. But if you study the history of comic books and the paper and and their social media, like that's scholarship, right? (laughs) Like, Mm -hmm. like a comic books, like whatever, it's kind of cool. But but studying the so it's the scholarship of science as a sociological experiment. I find that fascinating. So you have people like my friend Eric Weinstein, and he will you know rhapsodize about how important this is the biggest thing, even if it's not true. It shows like governmental cover ups and Pentagon secrets, and and if it is true, you know so much the better because now they have to have mastered technology and and engineering and science beyond the 25th century, you know, kind of, um, so the stakes are very high. And then I'll talk to people in the government that are funded by the government that, you know, whose job is to research threats to potentially United States interest in the scientific and technical realm. Mm -hmm. We're not, we're not studying it. And I don't think they're lying. There's no benefit. In fact, some of it's public. So, um, they can't, you know, be expected to, to lie and get away with it. So I do feel like there are, um, you know, competing visions for what this is. What bothers me is the intensity, is the passion about it. Um, and in that, in other words, like it's it's like scientists are covering up. No, there's no there's no one, you know, Candace, who would be happier than, you know, my young colleague who's a, she's starting off as a professor here, you know, for her to discover aliens, you know, and in unequivocal proof of it, like she'd get tenure, she'd probably win the Nobel Prize, she'd be, no, scientists have a huge vested interest in it, not just for like, oh, we're going to make movies and write a book, as mm-hmm. my friend and, you know, uh, Avi Loeb has has done very successfully, and he's at Harvard, and he started a, a proper investigatory, you know, um, a group called Project Galileo, and I'm te- you know, fringe involvement with that not fringe in the bad sense, but just uh, tangentially involved with it and external oversight. And this is using optical, like where else, duh, would you look for, you know, things flying around in space than a, a telescope? And who knows how to use a telescope better than astronomers? Like we've heard a lot from fighter pilots and things disappointed me, you know, when they showed on 60 Minutes, they just had like the fighter pilots and they didn't have any skeptics, they didn't have any astronomers, any, any physicists talk about it. And it's not like I need more exposure or whatever. Mm-hmm. No, they should show both sides because I don't think I could convince someone who really believes in it. And I've had on, you know, Tom DeLonge, who is you know, Blink-182, but he mm-hmm. also brought a lot of this to, to, you know, the forefront in New York Times in 2017. And subsequently, he was on my show. And, you know, I, I, I can't say that it's, it's, it's a slam dunk, you know, mm-hmm. kind of the cases that he's making. But on the other hand, I don't know if I could convince him. And in science, if I can't convince you that you could be wrong. If there's nothing I can say mm-hmm. that would falsify your preconceived notions, whether it's about me, about mm-hmm. some scientific theory, then it's just, it's literally not worth my time. Mm-hmm. So part of the, 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 the conversations that I have in Think Like a Nobel Prize winner is about the importance of listening to your critics 
but not too much. So mm-hmm. all these paradoxes. Mm-hmm. You have to be confident and have swagger, but have humility and maybe a touch of the imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. You have to listen to your critics and love the fact that they criticize you because in so doing, they make your theory, your result stronger because mm-hmm. the more it survives attacks, like you know, if you look at, you know, people complaining about Bitcoin or whatever, oh, it crashes, it goes up or down. You know, I've had Michael Saylor on my show. He's like, it's good when it crashes. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, oh, I guess you get a cheap. No, he's like, it shows that it's resilient, that it's what's called anti-fragile. The mm-hmm. same thing happens in ideas, in the space of logic and rational thinking mm-hmm. in science. It's good when you criticize, not personally ad hominem, but if you criticize my ideas with a form, I call it argue with love. Like mm-hmm. if you just do it to like shoot me down, build up your ego, and believe me, there's plenty of men and women like that in science. Mm-hmm. But if you do it out of genuine concern, and that can go towards spiritual things or whatever, if you do it, and I think that's the highest form of intellectual, rational discourse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. You can tell too when you're watching a debate and it's between two people that are friends, but maybe on different aisles of whatever the topic is. And you're it's yeah. something that you can watch and you can learn. You're, you're learning from both people, right? Yeah. Um, and then you watch other ones where if maybe it's like one of those political shows where there's like five people and yeah. they're all yelling at each other like, well, this isn't going anywhere right. and I'm now stressed and I didn't learn anything. Right. Have you ever like watched a presidential debate, Candace? And, oh, yeah, I changed my mind. No, I'm gonna, now I'm going to vote for whoever. You know. no, no, it, it never, never works. So those are pointless. I feel like most debates are pointless except mm-hmm. for the ones whose stakes could not be higher. <laughs> and the key is to know which is which. Mm hmm. Yeah, exactly. We'll learn a lot more about extraterrestrials just to summarize. And I'd love to do a part two someday. But um, yeah. when we do discover aliens or not, but you know, the hard thing is to not fall in love with your own theories, with your own agenda in science. It's very tempting mm-hmm. um, to go out and seek that which and find that which you sought after. It's just a natural human tendency called confirmation bias. And the book was written as a kind of guide, not for scientists. I mean, Hopefully, a lot of scientists and they are, you know, responding very favorably to it, uh, because you know, there's an old joke. Uh, how do you know a scientist is outgoing uh, because he stares at your feet when he talks to you instead of your own his own? Mm-hmm. Um, and that, and that's really true. 